Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show tonight. Tonight it is let's let's talk streaming with your host, Lieutenant Colonel Smash. Uh, tonight we're actually uh, we have a really awesome show for you tonight. Thank you so much for everyone for stopping by. I appreciate you. Thank you for thank you for the biddies. Um, I'm super excited about today's show because we're gonna be discussing some topics that are uh, they're not taboo. They're just they're just sensitive subjects, but I think uh, I think tonight I have a couple of guests on that are super. Uh, they're very confident streamers. They're they're very well versed in their craft, and I think we're gonna have an excellent conversation with them because I think we're gonna have a, a we're gonna dive deep and we can handle each other. And I, I I think we're gonna have a great discussion. They're professional. I'm professional as I pseudo professional right here. But I think we're gonna have an awesome conversation, and that's about female streamers, streamers, uh, uh, gamer girls, that kind of thing. But all the things that come along with that stigma, that come along with the hurdles of being a female streamer in this industry. So stick around for that. That's a huge part of tonight's show. Uh, we have, as you can see, up the topics up there. We have Twitch ad revenue. We'll be talking about that. Uh, you stream like a girl. <laughs> I thought it'd be a little funny spin on the conversation of female streamers. Uh, and the stream deck has arrived. So those are the big topics for tonight. So at any rate, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All righty. All right. How is everyone doing out there tonight? Hope you're having a great evening. Trippy Aldama, thank you for coming in tonight. Hope you enjoy the stream. Uh, feel free to be part of the conversation. I will not be able to answer every question while we're in the interviews with our two guests. Our two guests tonight will be Santana Banana and Gargoyle. Awesome streamers, awesome gamers. I think you'll really enjoy them. But while I'm interviewing them, uh, feel free to chat amongst, amongst yourselves. I will try to get to chat. I'll try to ask some questions of chat. I'd like to see some chat uh, questions posted as well for our streamers near the end of the interview. I will try to read off some of those questions if I can, uh, if I can get to those. So at any rate, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to our first topic of the evening. And that is Twitch ad revenue. So for those of you who don't know, Last month, late February, Twitch introduced a new revenue model for certain streamers. So I say certain streamers. So for, for certain partnered and certain affiliate streamers, they introduced a new, uh, let's call it a minimum wage, really, if you will, of ad revenue. Okay, so let's dive into that. Uh, this article comes to you from Engadget. Hold a second. There we go. We'll do, there we go. We're gonna go full screen here. Let's switch over to. There we go. All right. So at any rate, what we have tonight is Twitch is talking about a new ad revenue program that they're that they're rolling out. Uh, this started late last month. And basically the, to give you the scenario of this, this uh, kind of break this down for you. Twitch is well, they're listening to streamers talk about how ad revenue is inconsistent. There's no way of planning, uh, you know, month to month. Uh, and it's really just kind of hard to gauge as a, if this is your livelihood, how to kind of gauge your income on that ad revenue, right? Your few, your viewership fluctuates. That causes kind of a, uh, that may cause like a really successful month and then a really painful month, that kind of thing. And we're, they're trying to come up with some way to sustain their content creators, their streamers a little bit more, um, comfortably and so what they actually did is this an incentive program against just launched recently incentive program for uh live streamers some of the top tier streamers both in, in the partnered and the affiliate status um but what it actually does is um it gives you the ability to to opt in so if you're an affiliate or you're a partnered streamer and you have recently received an email you may or may not have received an email uh talking about opting into this partner program or into this uh group where you can uh, have uh, basically a consistent revenue stream, okay? Uh, for instance, let me just jump down here real quick. It says here that uh, streamers will get the option to pick from different payment models and the amount Twitch is offering each streamer will vary. In the example, Twitch laid out on its site a user who agrees to, let me just blow this up real quick so you read it. User who agrees to stream 40 hours per month can select the option of either a $100 payout to run a two minute, two minutes of ads per hour, 
or a $300 payout option, which gives them um, $300 uh, per hour uh, for three minutes of ads per hour. And then there's a $500 payout that uh, requires you to run four minutes of ads every hour. So what are some of the minimum requirements for this? Of course, depends on what tier you, you pick, but obviously the base requirement is you have to stream 40 hours a month. All right, to think about that, if you if you have to break that down, 40 hours a month is a full work week. That's, that's you know, nine to five full for a week, okay? Um, that's not two hours, three hours every other night. That, that is a full on, you know, if we had to break that down into 30 days, what does that, that come out to? Um, uh, 10 hours a week, right? A little less than 10 hours a week. Well, it's four weeks, four weeks. Let's call it four, a month, four weeks. 10 hours a week. That doesn't seem too bad. You could probably do two days of five hours, but a five hour long stream, that's a long stream, at least for at least for me, it feels like it. Um, you know, if you did uh, three hours, three nights a week, you know, you'd almost get there, but you'd have to, be, you'd have to push about three and a half hours per stream, three nights a week. Um, and that starts taking up a lot of time. So that you are putting in a a, 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 a bunch of time. What, is, what does that really break down to? Think about it, 40 hours, divided by 500, 500 divided by 40 hours, that's that's your hourly wage, right? So um, that is a really interesting thing that Twitch is offering. Uh, now, I don't know anyone who has received this incentive program for Twitch's new revenue model, but um, something to look for, definitely for sure. Um, but yeah, so again, we are talking about Twitch's new ad revenue program that they've just rolled out last month. Again, here, the title says it all. Uh, Twitch says its new ad revenue program will make payouts more reliable. So basically what this is, is it's basically like a guaranteed payout from Twitch. Um, just a flat baseline. If you qualify, and that becomes the question, what's the qualifications for this? Who's receiving us? They said that they've already rolled this out to a number of partners and a number of affiliates. Do you have to have a, I'm, a, I'm guessing you have to have a number of unique viewers every month and for a period of time. So there's some, there's gotta be some formula that they're using. So kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, and and I'll try to add, ask some, uh, get to your questions in just a moment. So there's gotta be a requirement for this. I don't know what that requirement is yet. They have not released it, but those who have been um, chosen have received an email already. Okay, so they've already done a small portion. Are they going to expand this? to other affiliates and other partners, who knows? But in the, in reality, there actually was a post here. There was a, uh, let me see if I can bring it up here real quick. Um, this this Twitter account here, uh, Ghost Whack, I think is how you pronounce it, um, Twitch to roll out a way of making money on the platform by streamers streaming a certain amount of hours running a certain amount of ads per hour. Um, and they point out, that somebody uh, mentioned in an article, uh, the new feature will offer reliable monthly income in exchange for a specified amount of hours streamed. Twitch has announced this. Uh, we'll be launching a new program, blah, 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 blah. This was back in January. They've actually implemented it in, uh, in February already. But he goes on to post about this. Um, I think it's great. Not sure how this would work for small streamers, but if you catch me running four minute ads, sorry, not sorry, right? Um, and we had a couple other people that, commented on this post it says uh this actually seems really nice i like that wonder if this will affect uh people that are subbed so they won't get ads uh or will they get ads too you know what i mean so that's an interesting thing one of the reasons why you subscribe to somebody is so that you don't get ads uh there was a couple of individuals uh but this brings up a this, this begs the question though right are people who subscribe to you are they going to get ads now if you opt in, you're gonna to have to really compare. If you happen to get this, you're gonna to have to look at that and see if this negates subscribers in, of your channel uh, getting ads or not. You know, because right now it's an ad-free viewing if you're a subscriber. So that is something really interesting uh, to come. But you know, it, again, it was only offered to uh, people who stream a lot, and I believe who have a fairly decent viewership. So already big streamers. Those are already streamers that aren't struggling. Honestly, the people who are struggling to make consistent income are the smaller streamers where this may not necessarily be um, obtainable, 
to them, right? You know, I'm, I got to imagine Twitch is not giving this out to people such as myself who have, you know, between, you know, five and 15 viewers at a given moment. Okay. Because I don't know why they'd pay a, a streamer like me, myself to a hundred dollars, $200, $300, 400, whatever it is, the, the tiers that they've created. Let's see. I think it was one, three and five, right? One, three and 500. Not really certain why they would offer that to a small streamer. I don't think they can get that kind of ad revenue from a streamer such as myself, even if I was streaming 40 hours uh, a month. So that's very, very interesting. Uh, Twitch Turbo subscriber. Never seen, I never see ads anymore at all. Not, no kidding. <laughs> oh, I did not realize that. I did not realize that. All right. We are. We're just a few minutes away. We are waiting on one more person. We, Our next topic is coming up very shortly. I'm just going to answer a couple of your questions, but our next topic is coming up very shortly. We're waiting on one more person to join the Just Waiting. And I think they've arrived. Oh, I think they've arrived, actually. So I, I do want everyone to ask questions at the end of the stream. Um, I will be introducing to you in just a moment our two guests for this evening mrs smash do you mind taking the doggo uh, away someplace else right now um so we will i will give you a chance to ask them questions but if you would talk amongst yourselves chat uh start posting questions in here i'll try to get to them but i really like to focus on the interviewees and um uh, kind of hear what they have to say and i think you're going to be really interested in what they have to say and then what i'll try to do is i'll give you a moment to ask questions at the end of their interview i'll open it up and so then I can read off your questions to them. So let's go ahead and bring them on in here. Just a moment, I'm gonna get everything set up here. There we go. Okay, let's see, do you have you should have video permissions. If you do not, let me know. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, give me just a moment. I will I will fix that right now. I was afraid of that. Let's just go right here. All right, go ahead and try one more time there. All right, do we have... So this, so thank you ladies for coming in. This is our, our first time that we're actually doing two. Let's see here. One, no, that's all right. So Santana and Gargoyle, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Uh, just having a quick issue with the video. I'm wondering, wondering why it's not letting me do that. I'm gonna re-enable this. There we go. All right, Gargoyle, you everything working there? Oh, for some reason there's stripes going through it. Uh-oh, let's see here. There we go. You know what, and I'm having a little bit of issue with the, um, with my layout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna bring you over into, there we go, so we can see you like that instead so i'll i'll work on my overlays in a moment so thank you <laughs> all right thank you so much for joining me this evening i'm going 
Yeah, so what I'd like to do is um, give you a couple minutes to introduce yourselves. If uh, Tell you what, we'll start with, with you, Gargoyle. Introduce yourself, uh, let us know how long you've been streaming, and what got you into streaming. Because I was enjoying playing video games. I'm kind of a newer gamer. I started gaming like four or five years ago. And um, I really wanted to start like saving all my clips. So I started like an Instagram page and then I started getting inspired by all these other women in the industry. And um, it was just kind of fun to get out there and meet new people and make new friends as I was adopting new games. Cause I was strictly playing Overwatch at the time. And then I kind of got pulled into Apex. So yeah, that's kind of my little story. So Santana, can you tell us about yourself then? What got you into streaming and how long have you been streaming? Yeah, so uh, my name's Banana, hello. Um, I've been streaming a little bit over like a year and a half or so. Um, I kind of just was, I feel like I was pushed into streaming a little bit. Um, I don't know, I've always <laughs> loved playing video games and all of my friends were just like, you should like stream it. And I was like, no, who's gonna watch, like what, you guys find me entertaining because you're my friends, but nor like normal people are <laughs> like you guys are weird like me um but i mean listen i guess i found my own little group of weird people <laughs> so and and so gargoyle i met you kind of through the apex um community right um and we yep. and not only did we we meet each other and played a, a taylor a couple times i know that we have found each other on the battlefield opposing each other which is all hilarious and rare uh i, I, I remember so excited i was like no way <laughs> And Santana, I think you and I met uh, through your fiance, husband now, wait, husband now, right? Husband. <laughs> by, the, by the way, congratulations. I don't think I had, had seen you since then. Um, and so uh, William D. Ness, and so I know he's, he streams as well. Um, he used to. He actually started doing a, um, a movie prop cast is what it's called. It's, um, so he does a podcast with one of his friends um, and they discuss props um, within movies and like they kind of do like a, a ranking draft for them. And, and if they had the perfect big room in their house, which props would they like draft to, to, to keep in, on for their own? So, <laughs> Well, that's awesome. I, I, I need to catch up with them because I love movies as well. Um, so let's start with this. I, I, I respect both of you. That's why I had you on here. Cause I think we can have a really awesome mature conversation about this, but we are going to kind of dive deep and, and, and dig at this subject. Let's start with this and whoever wants to chime in, uh, at, uh, here's how we'll run this. Whoever wants to answer the question first, by all means, step on in. And then if someone else has something to, to, uh, add to that conversation, uh, feel free to just kind of raise your hand or, or chime in whatever you would like to do. So the first thing is, as a female streamer, do you receive trolling or harassment while you stream? Let's just start there with a the basic question. Uh, yeah. I mean, not a lot while I'm streaming, but definitely on my socials, like when I post clips on TikTok or Instagram, I've, I've definitely experienced a lot more trolls then. And I don't know if it's because I have awesome mods or not on my stream, but um, I definitely experience it more in um, like Instagram, let's say, in a setting where I cannot react immediately. Yeah, I feel like I'm the exact opposite. I, I, well, I don't, maybe it's because I'm just like not on social media that much. I just, I don't know why. <laughs> struggle keeping up with it um but i and i don't get too often in stream um because again i have also good mods they they will try to snipe them out but um every once in a while like if they it's like sometimes they come in when like my mods like all went to step away or something and then that's when they the the trolls come in and they'll they'll get something snuck in there but um yeah it's inevitable when the guards are sleeping right that's when the yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, the, and, and, and I guess the, the question would be, is it, because I, I think a lot of streamers get trolled and I think the trolling is all different, right? So um, I guess the next question is, is let's say that does happen and what, what do you do when, 
when you are being harassed or on stream or whether it's in socials and we can call it trolling or harassing or whatever it might be what is your preferred method of handling or how do you handle that so for me i it i guess it kind of depends on how severe it is if it's something like you're fat <laughs> I just, I, I'm like, okay, tell me you're, you know, 14 without telling me you're 14. Like, that doesn't bother me. I'm just kind of like, okay, whatever. And I'll kind of ignore it. I'll delete it. I'll c continue with my game. It, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me like those type of little comments. Um, if it's something worse, then I will usually kind of, it also kind of depends what kind of mood I'm in. If I, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't catch you on a bad day. Yeah. If, if like, cause I never want to have someone ruin, like, one of my, I think, my, like, chat rules is, like, don't ruin my time and don't ruin everybody else's time. Mm -hmm. So I get very, like, protective of my chat and my community. So when someone kind of breaks those rules, I don't want to say like, mama bear because I'm not, like, their mom. But, like, I get, like, defensive. And I'll sometimes will, you know, say, like, hey, you know, heck off. Like, <laughs> you... uh, but I try yeah. to just ignore it delete it pretend like it didn't happen um for the most part but, you've always been very yeah. sweet to me but i can i can sense you have you have a little bit there that you can just you scratch that surface and then bam gargle how do you handle situations like that i agree like sometimes i get spicy back like sometimes i give it right back to them um i like on socials for example if someone comments something rude i pin their comment so that everyone can see how absurd this person is being. Um, and usually like my followers will just kind of come to my aid. But on stream specifically, um, whether it's like somebody in my ear, like somebody in my squad talking to me, um, I'll either mute them because I don't wanna hear it um, or I get spicy back and I just kind of give back the same energy and the same tone that they give me. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's, it's it's tough because it's not really in my nature to be that way, but I, I don't know. You, it's, it's gotten me thicker skin for sure since I started gaming. So, so what it sounds like Gargoyle, you've kind of developed that, that is a, that is the the best way that you found it to, to react to that. Is that right? It was a trial and error that yeah. you learned that kind of behavior. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, I used to, I mean, I used to cry. Like it used to make me really upset. And then I, I learned like, these are little people, like they have, little egos and either give it right back to them or mute them and just move on because some people will never end some people will never be satisfied and nothing i can say will ever resonate with them or you know get them to just quiet down and leave me alone um so i, th I think that's a yeah i think that is a kind of a t you, i mean we all went through high school right and then we, we, we had the bully that, and maybe our parents told us or whatever, but basically if you kind of, if you look like you're sensitive to some a subject, those bullies tend to dig harder. You know what I mean? Did you ever have that like in high school as well? <laughs> did anyone else get bullied in high school or was it just me? No, they just want to definitely did. Okay. Yeah. The second that they, they get that reaction, they're like, Oh, that's, that's the button. That, and then they keep mm -hmm. pushing that button. <laughs> So, oh, and now here's, here's where we're getting some really the, the, so let me preface this with this. I'm going to try to ask this as respectful as possible. <laughs> what validity is there, if any, to the statement, you only get views because you're a girl or because of the way you look? None. None. <laughs> okay. <laughs> none. I mean, in my opinion, none. Yeah, uh, elaborate. No, I, I want to hear this. It's just, it's so degrading to be told that because like I, there are some people on Twitch, like I have some of the most hardest working people on Twitch are women mm -hmm. and it's not because they are get their makeup done beforehand and it's not because what they're wearing. It doesn't matter what they're wearing. It doesn't, it shouldn't matter what they look like if it's it's it, it, it's like a, a it, it bothers me so much because it really does just um negate everything that like we work for and all of the hard work we've done by just saying oh well you have you know this amount of people in your stream because you know they 
they just want to sleep with you. They they just want to look at you. They just want to, you know, date you. Mm-hmm. And it sucks. It's not yeah. true. It's not a good feeling. I think I, I'd like to say that, like, to some extent, there are always going to be those types of people that watch certain streamers because they find themselves uh, attracted to them or think that they look a certain way or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But let's remember that the top streamers on Twitch are all males. So, I mean, it's it's still a man's game. You know, like, it's still a male-dominated industry. And to those people, I think that they, I don't know, they just have a sad view on the situation and i think that banana is right like we put a lot of time and effort into things and like it's not just being on twitch like there are so many people on twitch that don't have x amount of viewers whatever it is um you have to network you have to you know be active on so many different Mm -hmm. forms of social media certainly you you have to make the effort to connect with people and get to know their communities and embrace them like you want them to embrace you so it's a bunch of baloney that you get viewers because you're a female. There are definitely those people that watch streamers because they're female, but it's not. And certainly, and I'll be all. Some of the some of the streamers that I see doing such an, an incredible job at at networking with their community, engaging their community, are are, are women. The, the the discords that I'm in, the ones that are the most uh, regularly present, tend to be the the, the discords that are run by uh, female streamers. Yep. So you're absolutely right. What what if um so let's take a look at like certain streamers out there. Are there certain streamers out there, female streamers that hurt the hurt other female streamers? Let me throw out a couple names. I know you're good. you're ready you're Amaranth, right? I knew it. I knew okay. she was going to come up. Too. Okay. <laughs> I was that ready for woman it. woman is the most hard working woman I have ever seen in my life. I I refuse. Anytime that someone like brings that up, I'm like, no, she's a business woman. Okay. It's a business she's woman. Advantage of all of, of, of everything that she has. She is, she's like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to work my, but she, I don't think anyone on Twitch works harder than that girl. <laughs> she's always live. She yeah. seems to be always in or starting some new meta or trend. Yeah. It's actually so, so silly because when I first came across Amaranth, she was doing ASMR and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this girl. Like she's doing some great ASMR, perfect right before bed. And like the next time I saw she was live, she was doing a hot dub stream. And I was like, oh wait, what is, what's going on here? But like, she knows how to market and do business, number one, but mm-hmm. also number two, like, how, why is it anyone's business or concern how she decides to capitalize on her community, on her bubble, on her self and her content? Mm-hmm. It's, it, I don't think it negates those who are doing games on Twitch, those who are doing just chatting on Twitch, those who are actually doing ASMR or whatever it is, like, do you girl, get that bread. Yeah, and I've never seen, uh, I've never found anyone in in my community, and I'm guessing not in your community either. Um, that's just an assumption. But no one is going to take a, a viewer away from me. Uh, let, let's say this: I'm not competing against that that individual. If they're if someone's coming to view that kind of content online, they're not going to say, "Oh, Smash was there was there." If they if Amaranth wasn't streaming, they would go see Smash anyway. That, that, no, it's it's not the same community. <laughs> it's a totally different <laughs> bubble of people. I mean, the, the people who are going to be watching Amaranth for hours and hours don't want to watch someone play God of War. They don't no. want to watch someone mm-hmm. play Apex. Like they they don't. They they the they're no one's stealing anybody's views. And and not to mention, like you don't own your viewers. Like you don't own that are their people. If, no. They can do if, whatever they want. <laughs> If you feel that insecure about someone stealing your viewers, you have to prioritize yeah. what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because again, it's it's just uh, there's a lot of judgment in that statement, in my yeah. opinion. Of all the arguments I ever heard, I always thought that one was the most ridiculous. Yes. Yeah, that that one never made any sense to me. There 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 have been other arguments that I thought were okay. I I see your point, um, and and that would be this argument. You know, is Twitch the platform for certain things because as we know twitch is really 
up and down with what they do and do not ban based on their terms of service. They're not real consistent with it. Um, and because of that, we have, it doesn't matter if now we're talking, getting outside of female streamers, just streamers in general, they're always going to be pushing the envelope. And that brings a question of, is Twitch the right platform for certain types of practices, behaviors, attitudes, that type of thing, or are there other platforms for it? It's really just kind of what Twitch accepts. What do you, what do you think about that argument where people are continuing to push the envelope? I think that's where that, I think that to me, that's the root of all of the problems. It's Twitch needs to make a decision and stick with that decision and be consistent with everyone. Not say, okay, well, Sally over here did this one thing, so let me ban her for three weeks, but then Jane over here did the exact same thing, but she has 50,000 people watching her, so she's only going to get a three-day ban. So it needs to be consistent, and I, I think that... I would like to think that that's where a lot of the frustration comes from is because people are saying, well, why did so-and-so get banned for this long, but then, or why did I get banned for this long, but then this person got a slap on the wrist and they got a couple hours or they got a day. So I think I, I'm trying to <laughs> give the benefit of the doubt that that's where most of the frustration mm -hmm. comes from. Obviously, you are going to have those people that are like, no, boobs. But <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think at some point people really were trying to make the argument that, it, you know, it's, but just for gaming, let's get the hot tub streams out of here. It's just gaming as, as an example, right? Mm -hmm. I think Twitch is a lot more than just gaming. I think it is now just like a mega streaming platform for creators of all kinds. But when it comes to things like hot tub streaming, right? Does it violate Twitch terms of service in regard to like nudity or whatever it is? And that, again, I, I agree with Banana, is up to Twitch to define and stick to and, you know, push the same kinds of punishments on creators of all different sizes, of all different sizes, communities, I should say. Yeah, absolutely. And to your point of saying that there's just so much, like you think Twitch is so much more, it is not just gaming anymore. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I, the, yeah. I before Twitch got rid of uh, Twitch sing, that was one of like my most favorite categories to watch to just see, cause I can't sing for the life of me, but like to see other people just belting it out and like singing with others and collabing and stuff like that, that was so entertaining to me and I loved it. And I mean, there's art streams, there's AS ASMR, that's not <laughs> crossing yes. boundaries. Yes. <laughs> that's a whole other story. But um, there's like ASMR that I know a lot of it like helps people to like sleep and concentrate and things like that. There's there's just so much on Twitch. It's not just about gaming anymore. I don't think it needs to be. I mean, it's the platform is big enough for everybody. It doesn't just need to be one type of thing for everyone to succeed. Yes, Agreed. certainly. I I, uh, I had a girlfriend who made the. Like she made the statement, like there's room for everybody to sit at the table. Everyone can eat at this table. It, it shouldn't be just specific groups or specific communities um, that can have fun at this table. So you, you mentioned, I mean, obviously you mentioned like it really branching out. I, and I have to agree with both of you. The like we wouldn't be having this conversation right now and being able to share it with everyone if it weren't for Twitch um, being able to open that up and, and just ex be exclusive to gamers. So I totally agree that, and this is an awesome thing I've, um, which is, which is why, I, I mean, I've met most, most of you streaming. It's super awesome that you can talk about movies and art and all sorts of cool things. But yeah, I think, uh, have, to your points, some of the consistency in terms of, in terms of service would be helpful, but do we think that would improve any of the harassment or trolling do you think that would still exist or would it curb any of it? Oh, no. I think the internet is not a safe place. Like, <laughs> there are always going to be trolls. Do you remember there was a period of time where there were hate raids were like really rampant and we had to like uh, preemptively block specific accounts? And like oh that gosh, was so crazy. Yes. And it felt like Twitch was taking forever to get it under control. So like they always find a way. The haters always find a way. The trolls always find a way. They live and breathe very well and eat healthy on the internet so <laughs> i mean it's just a matter of you know reacting in a, in a good amount of time i don't know what the the solution is but they're gonna exist no matter what so that was so well put <laughs> thank you 
So we we talked about some of the the harassment that female streamers get. Do you do you think from your perspective, do men get um, harassment in in streaming? Uh, any type of equivalent harassment uh, at all? What what, what I, I need, I'd like to know your perspective on on what happens there as well. I I mean obviously men do get harassed. I th think that the harassment is different though and i mean obviously this is just my perspective i i'm not a guy i don't get i don't get that type of harassment but i feel like with women it's so much more like targeted toward our gender where when you hear another guy trolling and i mean there's uh, just for instance there's this i i i like watch a lot of like drama things on youtube <laughs> and there was this thing going on that this youtube streamer was trolling another one of uh, another guy that he was playing with but in, instead of going toward him he was going toward his sister to get at him so even then it was still oh geez directed toward women yeah. um and i just I, I don't know i think it'll always be different i don't think obviously we both get our yeah. fair shares of of um bullies but um yeah, it, it feels it feels a lot more like personal when it's coming toward us. Gotcha. I feel like a lot of the times the harass like there's definitely harassment aimed at, you know, any gender. Um, when it comes to women specifically, I think the easiest form of harassment is, you know, dumbing us down to our appearance, how we look, mm, okay. and what we should be doing besides gaming, go make your sandwich, you know, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, but men can get harassed just as easily. Oh, you're a controller player, you have aim assist, like whatever, we've seen it all. But a lot of the time, like a woman's worth and in the community can be mm. specifically dumbed down to you're not cute or you're fat or you got carried to your rank or whatever it is like you are not capable of having the skills to yeah. do that you are not you know networking enough like we we're talking about to actually have the viewers that you worked so hard for like it yeah. couldn't be anything besides the fact that you're a woman that you did like, that we get like that a the, lot more they almost yeah, like the men insults are, are toward their gameplay mm -hmm. the women insults are toward us <laughs> it, it, okay yeah it's how we look what we're doing like it, it's that yeah and obviously i'm not saying that's for everything but from what i've seen a lot of the time it's toward like oh well you can't you can't shoot but to us it's like why are you even playing video games like yeah. go yeah go clean the house it's it's a it Stop seems talking. to be like an like uh they they make the inadequacy very personal towards you is that what it's sounding like yes um it definitely feels that way so the yeah the the harassment we get is definitely from from my perspective as a as a man uh, in streaming uh, is definitely inadequacies at the game my my ability uh, the other thing that's really weird a lot of your mom stuff strangely yeah. directed towards guys I don't know do women get a weird thing like that like a your <laughs> no one ever talks about my dad okay yeah that's true <laughs> it's never so about my true. dad I, I wonder if it's just like low hanging fruit like guys are really guys tend to be really sensitive about their moms you know i don't know what it is uh but <laughs> i wonder if people trolls just like they find the that like stereotypical what are what are you typically sensitive about i think women it might be uh bodies appearance per, you know uh their accomplishments and stuff like that and i think men it's maybe like their relationships with it whether their their sister or their mom <laughs> right like that <laughs> I think um, it's definitely worth mentioning. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I, I know I, I've been in both your communities. Your communities are super uh, open and welcoming. Are there any communities that you've been in so far? And let, we'll narrow this down to like gaming communities, specific types of games that you think are better or worse for women? Um. So I can't speak too much into like, fps games i get very bad motion sickness so I, like i don't play apex okay. i don't play it i will i would just there would be a mess so i can't play them but um there is one game that i was able to play because it's not first person and, and arguably one of the most toxic communities in the gaming <laughs> world 
and I'm sure you know where I'm going. League of Legends. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, it's yeah, so it bad. Is. I, yeah. and I played that game for a year. And mm -hmm. I, I, I like to say I'm a recovering League of Legends player. Yeah. <laughs> because I, even to this day, I'm like, oh, I should really just play like a game or two. But it's just so addicting. But um, that is one of the most toxic communities. And I yeah. think um, it, it really is. I think it's, it, it revolves around like the competitive type games. So like... I know Apex is very competitive. I know Call of Duty is very competitive. Obviously, League of Legends is very competitive. And I think that, um, at least in my opinion, again, I'm not in those anymore, so I can't really tell. But I don't get... When I used to play League, it was constant. Constant. And a lot of the times, they assumed I was a guy. So it would go toward my gameplay. But then the second they knew that I was a female, the insults switched like that. <laughs> So it was so interesting. I had to like see it. It would be like, oh well, you can't last hit. You you stole this, whatever. And then the second that they would say like, bro or like man or something uh, male specific, and my friends would be like, dude, she's a girl. Switch like that. Oh. Switch to everything else, and they'd be like, yeah. oh, so I'm sorry, I forget. No wonder you're so bad. You that's why you can't play. Oh my gosh, no way. And then yeah, it was switched so quickly. Um, so it was very toxic. And I feel like a lot of the the um, FPS type communities are also like that. Again, not because I've experienced it, but because of what I've just heard. And just as like a, a broad example, I was watching a Pokemon stream the other day. And she was playing Apex. And one of her friends was in the background. And he was a guy. And she said, oh my god, I should have... I should tell you what to say and you speak so that they think that I'm a guy and that they'll leave me alone. And I was just like, Jesus, <laughs> that just like hit me. I was like, oh my God, she can't, she's so Pokimane of all people yeah. is, is telling her guy friend, hey, you t say this into the mic so that they don't know I'm a girl. Yeah, absolutely. It's insane. Absolutely. <laughs> it's uh, very on point though. You know, I I definitely, you know, I, my first game ever was Overwatch. I mm -hmm. was like, sucked into Overwatch for two, three years. That I believe is one of the most toxic communities. I stand by this. You can quote me on this. <laughs> I don't care. It's very true. I've cried many tears playing that game. Um, but, you know, I, toxic only because like, Specifically in Overwatch, there are different roles you can play. Mm -hmm. And like one of the roles is support. And I love playing support because I love to heal people and like, you know, see the game from a different point of view. And it was like, of course you're playing this character. Of course you're playing this role. You're a girl, you know, go back to the kitchen, make me a sandwich, all that good stuff. And even um, I was playing Apex the other day with one of my girlfriends and her, her gamer tag clearly her, it has her name in it. And you can clearly tell it's a female name. Okay. And our, our third was like, what's up, gargoyle? And I was like, hello, like in my little voice. And <laughs> and he, he was like, oh, wow, you're a girl. And then I was like, you're not going to say hi to my friend Kate. And he was like, oh, wow, two girls in here and like stop talking to us entirely. So it's just like, OK, you wanted to say hi to me until you found out I was female identifying like this is weird. Like it just doesn't make any sense. But that just means that he's a sad little person. So. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you think they do you think they feel like they don't know how to communicate? This is my next question was like what do you think that goes through men's heads when they hear a female voice on comms? Do they get, they get nervous? Do they get excited? Do they get, do they get angry? Do they like, or is it a wide gambit? What have I you experienced? That we make people nervous. <laughs> I think that they just like implode inside. I think that, I think they might get scared. Like, Oh my God, if this, if this girl is better than me, at this, if this girl gets a higher KDA than I do, like my life is over. So I need to get in her head and berate her so that she's not on her top game so that she can't do better than I can. Because God forbid, <laughs> the world would end. You know, I, I, I wish I could tell you what I think runs through the heads of, of you know, people who behave like that. It's just, it's just so hard to say. And, and I, I don't know if it makes them mad to, to hear a, a woman's voice. You're weird for that. Like, I don't know. It's just strange overall. Well, shoot. I, I, so I, I really appreciate you getting, coming on tonight and talking to me about this and, and sharing this with the community. Um, I, I'd like to take a few minutes before we end the night. Um, if there's any last closing statements, but I also want to give you a chance to, um, we'll start with, with you, uh, Santana banana. Um, is there anything that you're, 
doing in your community, any upcoming events, anything you want to promote. Um, obviously, I have your uh, Twitch links in, in, in our chat, and those are growing off. Tell us, tell my community what you're doing and what's coming up next. Um, I don't really have anything planned, but I am currently playing through the God of War series. Usually when I play a game and it's like a series-based game, I will go through every single one of them. Um, I was very sheltered when I was younger playing video games. All I played was, <laughs> all I played was Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. <laughs> and now that I've streamed, I'm like, there's so many games that I could be playing. So I'm doing that now, all first playthroughs. Um, I mean, that's, I guess, kind of the big thing is yeah. I just got to uh, God of Boy, which is the, the 2018 God of War. Um, and I just started it uh, yesterday, actually. And I'm very excited to play it's very good but um yeah nothing nothing specific just kind of getting through my next my next uh game series so very cool gargle what, what do you have coming up what, what can you tell my community uh about your your channel um i like like banana i don't have too too many things on the horizon now i kind of wish i had something cool to offer um but i on i just stream on mondays and wednesdays and on wednesdays i i like to 1v1 my my viewers so if you guys want to come in and show me a thing or two on apex feel Ooh. free to stop by i love being humbled by y'all i really do i feel like it makes me a better player so <laughs> that's that's all i really got you hear that chat so okay i'll i'll try to head over there and then uh I can let my chat watch you pummel me in some 1v1 on Apex because it's it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> oh man, that was fun. Still, I, I was like, oh, I know this guy. I know this guy. And then I messaged you. I was like, I think I just ran into you and ranked. And then I checked my my DMs like every five minutes. I was like, did you see? Did you see it? it? I, I am waiting so, for you to be like, oh my god, I remember that. I apologize. I'm so bad at Instagram. Like today. Uh, trying to get out the the promotional i was like okay do i how do i do this do i want to put it on my store so i am so bad at socials i am great thank you yeah i am 39 years old so socials are totally ridiculous to me now i'm like how does this thing work get my <laughs> bifocals on so but anyway thank you so much both of you for coming on super awesome uh i love your channels chat go check them out they will be in the chat below links to them they also have um if you head on over there i know they have links to their uh, their other socials as well so thank you so much ladies i appreciate you um hopefully i'll have you guys on another time okay yeah it sounds good us. we appreciate it thank you so much. Thank you so much have a great evening thanks bye. you too bye All right, that was Santana Banana and Gargoyle. Go check them out. The links are in the chat. Uh, so that was some awesome insight. So let's go ahead and move on to our next topic this evening, and that is the steamed... Oh, stream deck. My typing is all wrong. Hold on a second. Stream deck. No, 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 no. Our topics this evening are steam deck. There we go. Let's go ahead and change this right now because that is a that is a typo. Stinking autocorrect. There we go. There we go. We have Steam Deck. The Steam Deck has arrived. Gargo, thank you so much for the subscription. And appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on uh, and being part of this evening. I learned a lot from both of you. Thank you again so, so much. Um, go check them out, everybody. I really appreciate it. Give them some support. Go in there and... Uh, and you know, cheer them on. They're they're super awesome streamers. I have loved watching them uh, over the past several months. Um, so moving on to our next topic, let's go ahead and talk about the Steam Deck. It has finally arrived. For those of you who are not familiar with the Steam Deck, a couple months ago we did discuss, as I bring up a our window here, we did discuss the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck. So not a stream deck, not Elgato's stream deck, not the control system, but the Steam Deck from Valve. It is there. Let's see if we can bring it up here real quick on our desktop. This is the newest thing. Here it is. That is hitting the market. And we talked about this. We talked about this a couple of months ago. Um, and it was not yet released, but this was the new gaming system from Valve. This is a new portable system. Think of it like a, a Nintendo Switch, like on insane steroids, right? 
it's on steroids it's on human growth hormones it's it's been uh raised from birth you know with dumbbells in its hands this thing is decked out to be honest i have looked at the some of the equivalent ultra books like the ultra small uh laptops to get the equivalent specs in this you would have to pay double to sometimes triple the price of this this starts out at about four hundred dollars 399 for the 64 gig version it does have a uh, an expandable micro sd card it obviously bumps up from there 529 649 um for the 512 version but it the portability but one of some of the amazing things about this I, you can see from some of this uh some of these views here that it has look at all these buttons these trigger buttons it's got uh uh pinky index finger uh ring finger buttons underneath uh with a like back buttons kind of thing on, on the back side it's got a touch pad it's got d sticks um it's got directional sticks it has all these incredible inputs it's even touch screen it's amazing this is really really an incredible device but uh, we've already gone over a lot of the specs that this thing would have but last week these started shipping for people who had a pre-order these started shipping they some of them are starting to arrive on people's doors not just some of the big youtubers and streamers and things that are trying to promote this device um uh, linus text tips did get their hands on one very very early and they got to demo it and look at some of the games but now that it's in the hands of gamers we're starting to see what this thing can do. So let's go over to our notes here real quick. Let's see if I can pull my notes out here real quick. Um, one of the things that, uh, obviously the price comparison, the compatibility. So one of the big things is this runs what's they call Steam OS. It's a version of Linux. It boots right into basically uh, like the Windows application of your Steam um, store okay your steam library um, and right out of the box it jumps right into that there's there's still some bugs so we're starting to hear some words about some bugs um, navigating navigation of that thing is a little strange um, you don't always you don't necessarily get to see your full library you also don't necessarily get to see the store in the way that is very conducive um, you get to see, you see every game available in the steam store not games that are compatible with the steam deck and yes there are games that are not compatible with the Steam Deck. So that is going to be a big thing. If you consider buying one of these, you might want to go to a couple of websites that we're going to bring up here. One is Steam Deck. Here it is. Steam Deck. Uh, Valve has a website to see at a glance what games are verified to be working on the Steam Deck. Look at these. So it has a list of games, but this is not a great a great way to, to find out what kind of games see all verified games. This is not a great way to, to browse games and to buy games, okay? Especially for the Steam Deck. This is very, you just want to see if the games that you already have in your library, maybe you already own them. You want to see if it's compatible with this device. I have a better solution for you. They put out this website just came out last week this gentleman writes a full article about this go go check this out this is on digital trends uh the article was written by jesse lennox go check this out um but if you'll see down here they have a full list of games that they have verified okay that are to be that are working look at this long list this is much easier to go through than steam's little store Okay, look at this massive list. I think we're, they're now up to 500 and something games, 500 like 30 games that are verified. All right, we're going to keep, look at this. Now this is, okay, uh, playable games. They even have games that are playable. They're not necessarily verified, but they're apparently they're, uh, they're playable as well. But th th this is quite the list. But I have one more cool thing for you. If you are not interested in just scrolling through a list to see what games there are, there's actually a website called steam deck verified games okay this is at and i'm going to put the link in the chat right here here's the link in the chat steam deck verified games this is by uh avery site and you can actually search for games here okay so we can actually search we talked about god of war tonight there we go god of war 
we actually can search that. And this actually scours the Steam database, uh, does a backend search, scours it, pulls all the data out and provides it here. Not only does it do that, look at this. See these little check, green check marks? They've actually verified everything that works. All functionality, Functionality is accessible when using the default controller. This game shows Steam Deck controller icons. In-game interface text is legible on the Steam Deck. This game's default graphics configuration performs well on the Steam Deck. Um, you see these green, green dots, yellow dots, and red dots. Super easy to just scroll down here. Look at this, yellow dot, playable, but there's a couple issues. They tell you what those issues are. This game sometimes shows mouse keyboard on non-Steam Deck controller icons. Entering some text requires manual invoking the on-screen keyboard. You know, some strange things like that. Let's scroll down to see if we can find any other games that are uh, that show some issues here. Maybe find some yellow and red ones. Sea of Thieves. Okay, so if you own Sea of Thieves already on your uh, Steam library, it tells you some of the things that are having issues, okay? Super, super cool. Is there any that are they have in this list that are having problems. Destiny 2, okay, if you're a Destiny 2 player and you have that on your Steam library, guess what? This product's anti-cheat is not configured to support Steam Deck. This is important to know uh, before you go buy a Steam Deck, but that they are shipping, they are hitting people's doorsteps now, so the pre-orders are obviously getting them first, but, I, and I don't know what their, their turnaround is right now, you'll have to look what their turnaround is. Um, but let me tell you a couple of things hands-on, people that I know who have them, hands-on, the very, very easy to insert an, a micro SD card uh, upgrade that you can get a 512 gig, you can get a one terabyte micro SD card, throw that in there and transfer your library to it. Super, super helpful for people who want to buy just the basic um, 399 version, the, 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 the least expensive version that they have. So the, the removable SD card is super, super helpful. Uh, one of the things that they saw was the sleep setting. So it comes in and out of sleep super fast, like awesome fast, like hitting the button, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, it's on, you're ready to play. Hitting, hitting, hitting the power button again puts into sleep mode almost instantaneously, super awesome. Also, while in sleep mode, fairly, fairly decent um, battery life in sleep mode. Not not the level of like iPads or, or things like that, but the sleep mode, the battery drains about 10% every 24 hours. So obviously in sleep mode, right, it can then approximately last 9, 10 days just in sleep, not charging. So, you know, week and a half, completely just sitting on your desk, not even plugged into the charger. If you haven't, haven't touched the thing in about 3, 4 days, very likely when you pick it up, it'll still have battery. So that's super awesome. Um, one of the cool things that I think that they have implemented, and this was tested by Linus Tech Tips, and that is the friends and messaging and the voice chat built in. There are quick buttons to access the overlay to allow you to get to your Steam library and things like that while whatever you're doing, whether you're playing games or whatever, hit the quick button. You can go and you can then select from the top menu and one of the menu options, just like in your Steam library installed in your Windows machine, you can see your friends tab, hit your friends tab, it'll show your list of friends, scroll down, hit it, you can then start messaging them or you can invite them to a voice chat and right there, your Steam Deck has speakers, of course, and a microphone and you can start talking to them while you're playing games. You can invite them into your game right there, quick access. I thought that was a really sweet feature to be able to do that. I think this is going to advance and improve gaming uh, and, and the the environment of and of playing with friends and bringing friends into a um, a community, I guess you would say, and quickly from mobile devices. Nintendo has it, has it all wrong. Adding friends is really awkward and weird, um, but I think they have gone a step beyond Valve has in making sure that you they, they make this an online experience cooperative online experience and getting your friends involved with their their environment super super awesome right there um the uh wireless controller works with wireless controller like the xbox controller so if you have an xbox controller you can connect it via bluetooth that is super awesome one of the things that i think will be awesome but isn't cool mm, how do i put this it's got some things to work on 
but someday it's going to be awesome. And that is Valve is working on Steam's cloud save technology, okay? Right now, they kind of have a cloud save. It's not very, uh, not working very well. So let me give you a scenario. You're you're playing a game. You're playing some sort of platform that you really love. You you put the thing into sleep mode, or you log out. Uh, you set it down. And if you didn't log out properly, you go over to your PC. Let's say you just you got home. You set it down. You log on to your PC. You open up Steam and you try to open up your favorite game, Shovel Knight. You try to open up Shovel Knight, and you go to play it, and it say, it'll give you a warning. It says oh, you were playing on a different system, all your progress will be lost. So it's actually going to go back to your previous save that it saved in the cloud. So the cloud saving is very wonky right now, and it's only available on some games. But I promise you, once they get that ironed out, to be able to play a game, walk upstairs, power it off or log out of your game, go right over to your your uh, computer, open up your Steam library, and open up that game, and then be right where you picked off, uh, uh, pick up where you left off. Going to be amazing moving forward. Super, super cool. I, I can't wait until Valve perfects that technology. So, all right. Well, that is it. So the question is, do you, are you going to be getting a Steam Deck? Is $400 the uh, the price point that most people are going to start getting a steam deck think about it what are playstations costing um and it doesn't integrate with all the games that they have right now the the do we have a verified list here the steam deck is currently verified playable 519 games they've tested 1657 games of those 1657 519 are verified playable 457 are playable with, with a few issues and then 681 are, are unsupported so really the question becomes are they games that are in your library are those unsupported games are they playable games or are they fully verified games that are completely compatible with the steam deck that's a big question i think that's going to be a huge factor whether or not the steam deck steam deck does well moving forward if those triple a um uh, title games are available and, and playable across all devices all right. Well, that is it for us tonight. That It is after 10 o'clock. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I hope you had an awesome time. Uh, we obviously talked about Twitch ad revenue. That was something that uh, uh, partners and affiliates are being uh, invited to by Twitch as a more consistent revenue stream. Opt into a particular tier, and it's just a monthly payout by Twitch regardless of, of ad, you know, changes in ad revenue kind of like an allowance really by twitch based upon your status i think so but we don't know those numbers and what qualifies you to reach this status to be offered into this program um it's going to be really interesting to see how that progresses over the next several months uh obviously the uh, yeah, i hope you like the title the, the hilarious title there hopefully it was hilarious uh you stream like a girl and what does that mean well some of these girls are working insanely hard and they make a, an amazing community um so uh so thankful to have gargoyle on and santana banana please go again check them out here's their links again if you uh, did not get a chance to go watch them um, and finally the steam deck hopefully let me know your details hop on over to the discords here here are my socials for the evening um, love to have you be part of the community. Jump on over to Discord. We do this this show, Let's Talk Streaming, uh, every other Thursday. So two Thursdays a month, we talk about all things news. We talk about tips and tricks to improve your stream. Um, variety of things revolving around streaming and content creation. So if you like this, I hope you'll come back next Thursday, uh, week after next Thursday for that. Um, on the, those other days, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I stream in the evening and we talk movies and play games and we do 3D printing. So some fun stuff like that. But anyway, thank you so much all for uh, hanging out with me tonight. Let's go find someone who we can raid this evening. Who are we? Let's go find someone to raid on twitch we have you know who we're gonna raid this evening uh salsa you know raz mary i think you'll really enjoy raz mary we talked about 
uh, women in streaming. Let's go support another uh, awesome streamer. Super sweet, super nice, very fun, very infectious laugh. I think you're going to enjoy her. Uh, let's go raid Raspberry. Yeah, come up there. There we go. Let's go raid Raspberry. And what is she playing tonight? She's playing Goose Goose Duck. Totally fun game. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I appreciate uh, you spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed the show. We had some awesome questions uh, answered by some awesome streamers. So let's um, go show Raz our love. Thank you again. Until next time, keep calm and game on.